Hello Calculus students, welcome to the continuing video on examples of parametric curves and this time we're going to look at a parametric curve that has trigonometric functions as a way to generate it. So I've made my table and I'm going to plug in some values here for t. Uh, it doesn't really give instructions to what to put in for t so I'm just going to start out at t is equal to zero and when t is equal to zero cosine of zero is one times 2 is 2, plus 3 is 5. Sine of 0 is 0, so this point is going to be a negative 1. Okay. And then I'm going to put a few more in here before I try to graph them. And I think I'm going to start out by going in increments of uh, pi over 2, since I have some cosine and sine functions here. So let's see, when t is equal to pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0, x is equal to 3, um, sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so this is going to give me 2, and then uh, I'm going to go next to when t is equal to pi. So when t is equal to pi, cosine of pi is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1, Sine of pi is just 0, so I get negative 1 again. And then uh, 3 pi over 2 is going to come next. So cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so I get 3. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so I get negative 4. And now I think I'm ready to start drawing in my graph. Okay, so once I plot those points along with the t values at each of those points, this is the picture that I have. And you can see that this curve, if you start out as t equals 0, goes in this direction. And it looks something like that. Um, it's not quite a circle, and we'll see why it's not in a minute. Okay, but the direction of the curve basically spins that way. So starting here at t equals 0, hopefully these arrows are helpful and not confusing, indicating the direction that the function moves in, okay. or the, that the curve moves in, it's not a function. Okay. And then now we are going to eliminate the parameter. Now we have to be very careful when eliminating the parameter here because we don't want to end up with any messy and uh, gnarly um, like sine inverse, cosine inverse function. So the idea that we're going to use here is um, take advantage of this trig identity. Cosine theta plus sine theta is sine, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. Okay, so this is a very old and classic uh, trigonometric identity that we learned probably in Algebra 2, pre-calc definitely, maybe even geometry. Okay, so um, we, to do this, we're going to isolate cosine and sine. So the x function here, and I'll just write it up here, x is equal to, oh, I'm sorry, cosine t is equal to x minus 3 over 2. And down here, the sine of t is equal to y plus 1 over 3. So now if I take each of these and square them and add them together, so I know that cosine squared t plus sine squared t must be equal to this quantity squared, so x minus 3 over 2 quantity squared plus y plus 1 over 3 quantity squared. It's a slightly different color here, writing on the margin, y plus 1 over 3, that quantity squared. Okay. And so using this identity, we get 1 on the left side, and on the right side we get x minus 3 quantity squared over 4 plus y plus 1 quantity squared over 9. Okay. 
and you can see that this particular graph here in our old uh, xy coordinate plane is an ellipse. Okay. It's a circle except uh, the sides of it is a little bit squashed down. It's an, some people call it an oval, but the technical name for this is an ellipse. So these two examples hopefully just you know whet your appetite a little bit, maybe shake off some rust and whatever catchphrase that I can throw in here, but basically get you ready um, for some of the more challenging problems that we have coming our way regarding parametric functions, and uh, you know we're going to be able to do so, some very useful practical things with this. Now, one very useful and practical item that I should discuss with you is how to use your calculator. Um, in order to help you graph parametric functions. So one thing that you should do is hit the mode button on your calculator and go down to I think the fourth row here on mine, change it from function oops, change it from function to parametric. Okay. I like to stay in radian and then uh, go into here hit y equals and it'll give you this graph and it gives you you know what is x supposed to be so 3 plus 2 cosine t and y is negative 1 plus 3 sine t okay. and when we go to the window we have some interesting things um, let's f go back to the t min t max and t step for a minute uh, the, the x min x max and the y min y max and the scale I think I can leave that alone for now now the t min is what t values to start at. So I'll start at zero, and the t max. It's you know we went up to two pi, but we can keep on going beyond that. There's nothing wrong with that. The t step. If I pick a very large t step, like say five, um, it's a very crooked looking drawing. And if I want um, something more, f you know, finite or from some some that's more finely tuned I pick a small t step but the problem now is that the graph takes forever to graph because um, it's plotting a ton of points okay so I'm going to stop that and change this t step to maybe point 0.1 um, that'll balance the uh, that'll give us a nice balance between uh, accuracy and speed so there we have it. That's that's our the image of the graph here. It may look like a circle, but it's really not. It's actually an ellipse. It's slightly, slightly slanted a little bit. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Hopefully now you are ready to go uh, for some calculus in the parametric world.